Hey, y'all, welcome to another episode of My Tour Tales. I'm Eric Stone. I'm in Direct Image Studios, Nashville, Tennessee today with Kenny Worcester, my producer. And I'll be finishing up a song and maybe most of the songs from a new album, Chips and Sauce. So we'll see you at the end. This is where all the magic happens. This is Direct Image Studios. There's the door. Want to sing what? Never. Oh yeah, never. You want to say never? Yeah, where the first syllable, just like when you speak, if you can sing it like you speak it, then the human interpretation of you singing to them. Oh yeah. It it just it makes more sense to them. You don't lose them because I've had people like they've been sitting in the peanut gallery over here, you uh -huh. know, with their kid or whoever, and they'll be singing something, and they'll put it in the unnatural emphasis, like tomorrow is the second syllable. There's tomorrow. Right. And if you said, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh yeah. And rather than I'll see you tomorrow, see it's tomorrow, yeah. it's the second syllable. Like if I said today, it's the same thing, it's the second syllable. But if I said, I'll see you Monday, then it's the first syllable. Come Monday. If you said Monday. <laughs> yeah, Monday. I'll see you Monday. Yeah, come Let's Monday. Let's go eat a taco. That would be weird. Let's go eat a taco. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I uh, totally. And sometimes what you're doing is you're just not realizing it just because you're singing it. It's, it's that. You just remember this. The natural emphasis of words fall in a certain place. Just like tomorrow, the natural emphasis of tomorrow is the second syllable. Right. You don't say, I'll see you tomorrow. Right. So it's, you got three syllables, tomorrow, and the natural place that it falls in language is tomorrow. So it's syllable number two. If I said, I'll see you Monday, then the natural place is on the first syllable. Yeah. Monday instead of Monday. I'll see you Monday. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing sometimes without realizing it and what you can do is when you're writing the song, mm -hmm. just make sure that where it falls. And a lot of times all you have to do is move the word a half a beat oh, or yeah. one beat. I'm, I'm pretty, I watch for it and I listen for it all the time now. Yeah. And I hear it in songs. Yeah. I got me. But I messaged I mean, you, you the other day about yeah, that. What? Yeah, yeah. Well, you and I, yeah, and that one, that one, uh, when the rain washes, you clean. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's one that John Conley, and then the other one is that, I'm not talking about moving in, moving in. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm not talking about moving in. That's what they could have done. Uh -huh. But, you know, sometimes they just make a crit. So, I mean, there's places to break the rules and why you break the rules. But you can tell when people are doing it on purpose. I guarantee you, Stevie Nicks was saying, when the rain washes you clean your... She was doing that on purpose. Yeah. I mean, she just said, because if you go, when the rain washes you clean you, it doesn't fall right. Hmm. You know and I, mean? I think it's just we're used to it. I think it might have fallen right. Yeah. I mean, if he, she'd done it that way in the beginning. It I just think. sounds melodically better in that context to go, da, 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 da. it just sounds yeah. better. So sometimes oh, yeah. it's a rhythmic or melody thing, uh -huh. but there's a difference between doing something on accident and doing something on purpose. You can kind of tell that something has more like, you know, um, uh, intent. Sure. It's done with intent as opposed mm -hmm. to just somebody going and singing something. So, I mean, on just i would say just like when you're listen when you're going through your song if you find a word that you're putting an unnatural emphasis just try to move it if you yeah. just move it one beat either way it'll fall where it needs to no, or you I'm... can find a way to make it fall to where it, and here's the advantage for it the i mean if if it's a melodic thing and something else wins because there's other things to consider but the really the main thing is melody at that point yeah if melody wins then just do whatever feels right for melody winning but if you're putting an unnatural emphasis on a word and then it goes by the listener they don't get what you're saying you lose them i've had that happen on one song yeah that we recorded that neither one of us caught uh -huh. and it's, it, was, it was it was a word it was word uh carrying the word carrying uh-huh Carrying, like I'm carrying. Yeah, I'm carrying a bucket of water. Yeah. It was in a song I wrote, and we said she was carrying her pants because she took her pants off at this bar. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you don't remember this song, but uh -huh. anyway, this girl stripped at this bar that I was playing at, and she was carrying her pants. And I, when I said carrying, it sounded like some Bob Bitchin actually said, "What's carry?" 
She's carry. What's in her pants? She's got Carrie. Oh, you mean Carrie in her pants? You put yeah, it. exactly. Uh, it was saying like that. Yeah. Neither, neither one of us caught it, and uh, sometimes it's just, it's just you know, it was it, just the way the melody was, you know. Oh. I'd have to play it for it to, to, to you. Yeah. You would hear it in then. the context. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's there's some things that I've helped you out with, and then some stuff I just leave it alone, you know, because it, it just gets to a point to where like if if you if you get in and beat it up too much or whatever, um, then it ends up being you get something, but you lose something to gain something, you know, and then mm -hmm. it's just like, well, what's the payoff? But or you know, what's the sure, you know. Oh, yeah, like, like if I said I'm gonna go to the store, I don't want I'm gonna go to the store. Right. You, it's, it's not. It's go not to the, the store. Yeah. It's the store is the is the most the important part of the yeah, subject. That's the subject. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the store. I'm not gonna go to the store. Right. And there's people. You know, if you put it in rhythm, I'm gonna go to the store. So if you put yeah. on a downbeat, yeah. Rhythmically, no matter what you do, if you go, I'm gonna go to the store. Well, if you put the on a downbeat, it's gonna be emphasized. Yeah. If I go, I'm gonna go to the store and put on a store on right. the upbeat. Right. Exactly. Then you're like, there's different things that you can do. That's fine. The, the three things that end up influencing how words come across to the listener is the melody. Because if I go, I'm going to go to the, and raise a melody up there, it's going to stick out. You know? Sure. So the melody is one. The other one is where it falls rhythmically. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is how long do you stay on it? Yeah. Like if I'm going to go to the store. Right. You know, you stay on it that long, you're emphasizing the shit out of it. Yeah, definitely. Or if you make a lick out of it, I'm going to go to the store. Yeah. Just like what I'm sharing with you. Uh -huh. And you'll go in and you'll you'll write it into your song. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what you're, um, sometimes you're doing and sometimes you're not. And I'll show you the, some of the, play. you know, we've already tweaked on some of this stuff over like, you know, over, but whatever. Yeah. That's the only thing I ever see with you once in a while that end. And then the other thing is like picking the right keys of things. You know, you always have to like check that out. Sure. So, so you know that, but that's with everybody. That's not you. That's yeah, I tend to write a lot of songs in the same range because I sing, I write in D a lot. So look who dropped by while I'm recording studio to see me, mm -hmm. Corey and Peyton. What what a shocker! We're fixing to start recording uh, topical crimes and tropical climes. Yeah, that's it. That's ah. that name. Look okay, who came to see me. Alana or... Delana. De huh? Delana. Delana, yeah. 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 What are you doing here? Whatever. Here for moral support. Okay. Uh, <laughs> some of this gear you just got. Okay, I got some new mic pre's. These are the 500 series of Neve. Mm -hmm. And these are Neve EQs. I'm using those on the acoustic guitar. Uh, I talked to a guy and he just really liked them and so I tried them and you know they're definitely high quality as high quality as these these are BAE mm -hmm. and BAE is is it's like it's they they're totally reverse engineered Neves they're the best that you can get they mm -hmm. just they're like total mojo they really sound awesome so wow. that's those are BAE preamps I mm -hmm. use that for the bass direct and an amp mm -hmm. I use these for the overheads on the drums I use this for electric guitar, stereo, use this one for snare, use this one for kick. These are uh, multiple EQ points, and then more of them up here, and then this is a BAE, and these are Vintex. But this is a BAE, I use that on the keyboards. Mm -hmm. And these are all Vintex, but these are all the mic pre's. But the, basically, the most newest acquisitions for me are these BAE times one, two, three, four, five, six, and then these two knees. Wow. So, that's and, cool. And then, and one then the more new board thing. too, though. You got the new. Well, yeah. you got the new. Uh... Sixteen more channel expansion. It was eight channels, which is this and the brain. And this is like the, yeah. the brain. This is another sixteen channels, and it goes in banks. So it's one through twenty-four, and then you go bank two, and now you're at twenty-five to forty-eight. And if you have more, it just keeps banking wow. in multiples of twenty-four. One and to this twenty-four. Is a D command. Yeah. D command D. How do you say it? D, D command. D command. Cool. D command E S and then there's these and these are called Burl and they're stereo converters but I'm using those on my mix bus and they're about three thousand bucks a piece or wow. twenty seven hundred bucks something. They're like they're like like analog kind of like build. Uh -huh. Very analog build. And these yeah. are all your transformers, converters, all converters, digital audio, or uh, yeah, sorry. this is a Brycasty reverb, which is about a three thousand dollar reverb. They're really expensive and they're great. They're like everybody loves them. These are converters, converters, and then there's Pro Tools card in there. 
This is universal audio for running plugins, and then there's another plug-in card in there. This is what runs the monitor system, and then the one on the bottom is a digital interface for running digital reverbs. Wow, digital and then there are, a lot of it runs off of this tower mm -hmm. right here, right? Yeah. And the tower right. is what? A Mac Pro. Mac, Mac Pro, yeah, Mac, Mac Pro tower. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Mac, Mac, Mac rules. Yeah, Mac rules, yeah. Lots of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll make this sound better later. Yeah. So what we're doing right now, that top of white line, those are like some high processing plugins. Uh -huh. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, they right there, check out down here at this spot, the key keyboard. All three fingers, mm -hmm. that is like the claw, they call it. Now, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is you click on any one of these up here, right. and it initiates that whole row. Oh, okay. So, it, and it takes a little while because it's gonna stall right in here because these are really big uh, memory hogs. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn it on. Right now it's loading all those. There's the wheel mm -hmm. saying, okay, yeah, we got something there. So this one is there. That one is a is a memory hog. That one's faster, faster. Another memory hog, which is Ocean Way. Now these are all processing, really high processing plugins for mix down. They're wow. like a lot of really great sounding analog-ish kind of options. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go do the next row. Same thing, you hit the three fingers on the claw. Yeah. You hit any one of these and that just tells we're going to get them all. Wow. So that loads up another bank of all plugins. Now all these plugins like this is a uh, an analog tape machine plugin that wow. I use because it just really does some really cool things with different things. This is a uh, Empirical Labs, they, used to, they call them a distressor. They're a really great sounding, again, analog kind of everything in digital is like how can we make it sound more like tape oh, but funny. they also give you a lot of options there's a lot of plugins in the world that keep it in the digital but very pristine but they still kind of like lean things towards if not being we're building this to sound like analog or mm -hmm. we're building this to kind of have analog properties mm -hmm. same with this company right here this is called fab filter mm -hmm. this is a really high-end great sounding awesome equalizing plugin it's equalizer hmm. um, these are uh, this is a reverb controller for bright cat bricasti bricasti is like one of the um, the more modern the best analog hardware reverb not a plug-in mm -hmm. a hardware reverb it's actually right there in the rack it's this m7 right here Okay, yeah. This is a, it's called Bricasti, it says oh, yeah. right so there. that actually makes it work. That's actually a hardware, and this plugin controls that hardware. I see. But this is a great plugin because what it does is when you recall a session, rather than having to go over to that hardware box and dial up whatever mm -hmm. it was, your setting was, it'll remember this in Pro Tools. So this is an amazing, it's, it isesn't do any sound. Right. It just remembers it all the, con that's right, it's a controller for the Bricast Bricasti M7. And this company went out of their way to make this plugin because they knew they could sell it because people out there have them and they want to be able to recall their plugins. Mm -hmm. But these are all like um, everything in here, all these white, these are all high processing plugins for making records. So, mm. so those were all loaded up and I'm about to load up a few more toys here that I haven't got into the mix and I'm going to start mixing this song, Tropical Crimes. All right, so I'm gonna load up some more plugins over here. They're hidden away. Turning those all on now. It's amazing. All right, so I just turned these all on, these green here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna bank over here and turn them on, plugins. So those are basically on. I've already done some work on this song, just a little bit of work, because mm -hmm. I sent you a track mix. So what I did is I just hit, uh, zero and it recalled my what's called a static mix mm -hmm. it's it doesn't really it's not really a mix but it, there is some interaction and some dynamics that i've already programmed in now i'm going to do way more deep into it but this is i uh, i've got your vocal which i didn't have until you walked in the door today mm -hmm. so i couldn't mix a song around something that doesn't exist right so you have to have the final vocal because you can't build dynamics around something that's not there correct so now what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning and I got to pull up some other gear. This is an analog all tube uh, mastering compressor mm -hmm. and I use that on my stereo mix bus along with these 
and these are, um, they are analog um, and digital converters. Mm. So they convert the sound in and out of the digital, or out of the analog realm. So basically the whole song is gonna be going through this mm -hmm. stereo and these stereo, stereo in and out, both analog, and then these are some more hardware reverbs that I like to use because they just sound better than plugins. I don't, and I use plugins too, but I really like these for certain things mm -hmm. because the hardware things just are cool. Yeah, definitely. And these are bur what they're called burl converters, mm. and they have great big fat power transformers on them, which again gets more back into that analog thing. And it's really hard to describe what it does, but it does something that is very aware. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean you're aware of it. Right. You can hear it. You may not know exactly what it is, but you know it's in there, and you just go, it just feels good. So mm -hmm. it's one of those kind of things. Very cool. Yep. You see, these are the Nashville numbers Boom. for some of my songs. That's how they do it in the studio. It's, it's one built off of, of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Very cool. So Do is one. That's a two minor, which would be um, in the key of C would be a D minor because the one would be a C. Mm -hmm. And a two is a D. And then a C, C D, minor. E, F, G, A, B, C, yeah. D, F, G, A, B, C. It just keeps yep. a big circle. Yep. Okay, I'm going to turn on the rest of the podium. This is me trying to pretend like I understand what Kenny's talking about when he shows me all these things. That's the mix file. So here's a, this is a, a wave file, file, a wave form of the, audio, of the vocal audio. And this right, that little tiny blob right there is re of requires. I'm turning up the re. Re so I can turn it up. I can turn it up. That's way too loud or less gone. Now it'll be just choirs. So I'm just gonna turn it up. I'm gonna guess right so there. So it matches. Paula's life required this desperate man. And you know, Pretty close. Yeah, that's close enough to where they can hear what it is. So what it is, because there's drums that are hitting on that same beat and everything, sometimes you just mm -hmm. take it and you slide it just a nanosecond later and then you'll hear it. Paula's life required this desperate but If that doesn't work that way, then you go the other way. Wow. Paula's life required this. Now you can hear it. Paula's life required this desperate measure. The drum is hitting at the exact same time as Rick. Yeah, right. It measured each. Like a secret agent man with a not so secret tan. My 
Hello, it's Kenny. Pro Tools on the phone. Hey, man. Well, good. Did you get my video? I, I, I sent it to Antares too, and um, I haven't heard anything back from them other than the guy named Scott would be getting in touch with me. But that's the newest version of Pro Tools. Take you on a little tour while Kenny's on the phone. Another one of my songs right there. National number system. This is the big console they record on. This kind of runs everything right here, except the mixer faders and everything. Kenny got a Grammy. Actually, it's an Emmy. This is the recording room. This is where I do the vocals. This is where I did the song that I wrote. Here's one of the guitar rooms and keyboard rooms. They play together. Keyboard's in here, and then the guitar, acoustic guitar goes in this room. It's the whole studio right here. And here's the drum room. This is the big rig. And I'll show you where John Conley record. John Conley's the lead guitar player. One of them, James Mitchell, John Conley. Okay, uh, okay, I got another drum fill up. Setting. This is the uh, lead guitar room. An old Oahu amp. You can see that. It's a freaking old amp. Very, very old, but the sound, there's nothing like it in the world. Of course, you got third power stuff here, which is really the highest end of the newest stuff coming out. Third power is the best. Of course, there's a Fender, and he's got all kind of stuff. I think it's a 1967 Tele. Lots of cool guitars. This is my favorite room. This is where, I'm at. This is where I get coffee. Anyway, what I was gonna try to say is I won't make you guys watch this whole mix down. It's boring. It's gonna be mixing over and over and over wears me out too, but uh, it's a little bit what we do when we go in the studio. Spaghetti. You know, it was still crashing once so in a while, let you guys go. times in one vocal. Hey y'all, hope you enjoyed this version of My Tour Tales. I got my song recorded, a little bit more work done, and Kenny was dealing with uh, Pro Tools, and it was a pretty interesting concept to hear him uh, train about some of that stuff, especially the uh, the vocal phrasing and all that stuff and just showing how all this the plugins stuff works. So it was pretty interesting. I hope you liked it. For my tour tales, I'm Eric Stone. Remember, open roads, open minds. We'll see you next time.